Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living, and happy December. Um, it, it feels a lot closer to September out there, but <laughs> um, welcome everyone. It's good to feel, feel your warmth and see your smiling faces. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, we are entering the month of December and as you can see by the stage, um, it's, it's, it's gotten very festive, it's, it's awesome. And I know that Rob Ekman and Steve Matthews and Jerry Hennich and Chris Kirch had something to do with that. Thank you. It's, it lifted me right up as soon as they asked. <clears throat> yeah. It lifted me up when I walked in the door today. So let's, let's sing together. Let's bring in this bright and new day and sing together. Come darkness, come light. my favorite song because <laughs> I think it's what we're all about come doubting come sure come weary to our door come see what love is for hallelujah so happy December everybody it's that month and thank you to the people doing all the decorations that's so fabulous to walk in here this morning and and see that I prayed it into being because I wasn't willing to do it. <laughs> My name is Linda Brewer, and we are just so very grateful to have all of you here with us this very morning. Our practitioner doing our reading and leading us in prayer is Teresa Martin, and our practitioner holding high watch this morning is Farrell Zeman, who is filling in for our dear Katie Hernandez, who is still home, being restored to perfect health. Please continue to know that for Katie. Throughout our service, Farrell will be in prayer, knowing that the best is high and highest is unfolding as we share this sacred time together. Our center is a spiritual community that teaches a philosophy for daily living based on spiritual principles and practices that are universal among religions. We honor every pathway by which people seek to know and connect with the divine and we work on our individual consciousness so that we can help make the world a better place. So if you will, I invite you to join me in saying with feeling our vision statement. 
We are a thriving community where individually and together we embody and express our spiritual magnificence for the highest good of all. Thank you so very much. And I'll remind you, as I always do, that if you want to know what's happening at our center, or if you want to send a prayer request, or get in touch with us about something, or just about anything else, read about all these folks up here, except for Rob and Raj, who still haven't gotten me their bios and their pictures. <laughs> and yes, I'm going to continue to nag them. Um, just go to our website, which is www spirituallyfree.org. If there is anyone here this morning for the very first time, we would love to welcome you. And if you're not too shy, if you're willing to raise your hand or stand up and just let us say hello and thank you for being, thank you for getting those lights out of my eyes so I can see. Anybody here this morning for the first time? Come on. I see unfamiliar faces out there. Are you hiding from me? OK, well, we had a lovely gift, but since no one's here. <laughs> anyway, for everyone here, I affirm wherever you are in your spiritual journey that you will experience a blessing this morning. Our theme this new month is Journey of Becoming. And this morning, we're so happy to have Randy Scott back as our speaker. His topic today is longing to belong. And don't we all long to belong? Next week, after an absence of several years, Charles Holt will be in the house sharing his vision and his wonderful music talent with us. So you're not going to want to miss that. This Wednesday, December 8th at 7 PM, we hope you'll join us for our monthly Teze service. Teze is a sacred time of prayer musical chanting, and personal reflection. Especially in the flurry of the holidays, Teze can be a wonderful way to take a pause from all the craziness that happens this time of year and just settle down. So if that appeals to you, please join us this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And coming up on Friday night, December 10th, this very coming Friday night, is our holiday party. It's 6 p.m., complete with festive holiday games, and our own dear Rob Ekman will be dramatically reading a couple of authentic, old-fashioned holiday ghost stories. Mm -hmm. So we hope you will all come and be part of that. You're invited to bring a plate of hors d'oeuvres, your favorite ones to share with everyone, bring a white elephant gift, very inexpensive or better yet free, um, to use for awards for the holiday, um, win the winners of the, of the games. So bring yourself, bring a friend, and let's celebrate the holidays together. And as always, these things don't just happen. So if you'd like to help with, with setting up or cleaning up their sign-up sheets out in the lobby. I don't know about you, but I have very special memories of Christmas Eve candlelight services when I was a child. And I'm so grateful that our wonderful band, that they've all agreed to be here on Christmas Eve um, to join us in presenting a metaphysical Christmas Eve candlelighting service at 7 p.m. We will read the biblical accounts, talk about the deeper meaning underneath those stories, and listen to and sing a lot of wonderful Christmas music, ending with a candlelighting ritual. So I really hope you'll all come, bring your extended families. I know some of you will have family here. My nieces will be here. I'm so excited. And come and share this sacred evening with us. And our year will end with our burning bowl service at 6 p.m. on New Year's Eve when we release all the stuff we don't want to take with us into the new year. And I'm guessing we all have a pretty long list, COVID right at the top of the list, and where we set our intentions for the year to come. So please don't miss that. It's a lot of people's favorite service of the year. And as I do whenever I'm here, I remind you that our center was founded on, and it is grounded in prayer. Our professional prayer practitioners are trained in the art and science of affirmative prayer. And they are here to pray with you, pray for you, know the truth for you. You can put a prayer request in the prayer box in the lobby, 
or submit one online. And if you do that, it'll go out to all the practitioners, and we'll all spend time this week in prayer, knowing the best and highest for you. So right now, I invite you to settle in, connect to that sacred space that lives within each one of us, and allow Teresa's Teresa's reading and the centering music to really ground you there, and then Teresa will lead us in prayer. As Linda just said, our talk for today and our theme for the day is longing to belong. And my feeling about that is when we say we belong, longing, we're longing to be. So that's a very sacred place to be in. Now today I'm reading from my favorite Irish author, John O'Donoghue, and it's from his book, Anamkara. Probably you've all read it, but it's my favorite to go to. And here he says, he's talking about the circle of belonging. We need more resonant words to mirror this than the tired word of relationship. Phrases like, ancient circle, or an ancient belonging awakens and discovers itself, help to bring out the deeper meaning and mystery of encounter. This is the more sacred language of the soul for togetherness and intimacy. When two people love each other, there is a third force between them. Sometimes, when a friendship is in trouble, it is not to be healed by endless analysis or counseling. We need to change the rhythm and come in contact with that ancient belonging which brought you together. This ancient affinity will hold you together if you invoke its power and presence around you. When people are really awakened, they inhabit the one circle of belonging. They have awakened a more ancient force around them which will hold them together and mind them. <clears throat> Friendship needs a bit of nurturing. Often people devote their primary attention to the facts of their lives, to their situation, to their work, to their status. Most of their energy goes into doing. Meister Eckhart writes beautifully about this temptation. He says, many people wonder where they should be, what they should do, and when in fact, they should be more concerned with how to be. In a culture preoccupied with fixities and definites and correspondingly impatient of mystery, it is difficult to step out of the transparency of false light into a more candlelight world of soul. Perhaps the light of the soul is like a Rembrandt light, that tawny gold light for which Rembrandt's work is known. This light gives such a real sense of depth and substance of the figures on whom it gently shines. It achieves a profound complexity of presence through the subtle use of shadow. Such a golden earth light is the natural sister and cradle of illumination.
this beautiful day it is thrilling to be at one with all of you and with all of life this one source of life fills everything with its power and its presence and it is in each and every one there is no place it is not so in recognizing this divine space that we inhabit, these precious bodies that are instruments of the one, we are all together in this. So in this powerful space, I claim this oneness. I claim knowing it. I claim that we are well, happy, that we enjoy our existence, that the power and presence works each day and each moment for us, with us, around us, as it is everywhere present. We just have to acknowledge and know that it is there. So as we begin, our meeting this day. I bless each and every one here. I bless our orchestra, our band, each person in the band who has given their time and energy to rehearse and to know the songs that they sing and play. I am deeply grateful for those who come to volunteer and do all of the work in their time for the beauty of the stage, the decorations, and the feeling of that light in our heart on this Christmas time. I am so grateful. I am so grateful for all of my life and for all that exists within it. So giving thanks, I release my word, letting it be as together we say, and so it is. Thank you, Teresa. Sometimes I forget um, that underneath my, my pain or my wanting, my, all my urges, my desires, is, is a deeper longing, a holy longing. And if we can do what it takes 
to discover and reveal that deeper longing um, and surrender to it. Um, our life can be so much more fulfilling and we can easily notice the beauty and love around us. Let's sing this song together. It's called Let Love Have Me. Thanks for singing along. <clears throat> it's my pleasure to introduce our special music today. Um, I love it when Leslie writes something new. And for somebody to write a seasonal song at this time of year and have it be distinct and different and, and beautiful is, you know, it can be quite a challenge. But she has really risen to this challenge. She has, and I'll let her tell stories about these songs and how they came to be, but they are just beautiful messages of this season. Let's give a warm round of applause. Leslie Monroe. Thank you. This, uh, both of these songs I wrote back in uh, late 90s, and this one's very dated. But this, uh, I'm, I'm going to sing it anyway because of the feeling of it. And this uh, was inspired by a beautiful woman who I was a mission companion with up in a little tiny town in Alaska called North Pole. 
we lived in a little Texas trailer that was meant for Texas temperatures. So that was, that was a journey there um, with a furnace that continued to stop functioning. But the beautiful people around us rallied and, and we, we survived. So it was good. Anyway, fast forward about, oh, almost 15 years. And I was thinking of her and what a joy it was to do what we were doing together. Because up in that place in the wintertime, we were not allowed to go out after dark, which was about, what, 3.30? And she was so creative to create other things to do with our time that created massive, wonderful experiences, which I'm very grateful for. So I was thinking of her. And back then, uh, you couldn't go online necessarily and just find somebody as easily as we can now, except for the people that don't want to be found. <laughs> But I did uh, make the effort because I, I'm not going to say any more because the song will say it for me. Joy. 
Wow, that's gorgeous. And you just described my worst nightmare, living in a Texas trailer in Alaska with a broken furnace. <laughs> oh my gosh. So when I grow up, if I ever do, I want to be just like our speaker. I always feel inspired by what he shares. But even more than that, his calm, grounded energy helps me to slow down and pay attention to what really matters. Randy is the founder of Zen Powerment, which came into being as he recovered from a motorcycle accident that nearly killed him when he was 33. While recovering, he reevaluated his life, searching for a deeper meaning, which led him to compile the tools and the principles of Zen Powerment out of his passion for the fusion of science and spirituality. Sound like anything else we all know? These tools have allowed him to enjoy more peace, more power, and more purpose in his life. He's an author, an executive mentor, and a genuinely authentic human being. Please join me in welcoming back Randy Scott. Thank you so much, Linda. I love you. I love you, too. Mm. Um, have some good news and some unfortunate news. The topic belonging or longing to belong is such a great topic. Um, the good news as well is we all belong. And if we have a longing, it's something that we're not understanding about ourselves or about us as a universe. The unfortunate news is that's not what I prepared today. <laughs> the topic that uh, I thought I was given was on surrendering. So you're ready for your motivational message? <laughs> Give up. Are you motivated? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what's really cool is giving up is a part of surrendering. And it was interesting that Rick used the word surrender when he was talking right before he spoke. How would it feel if you knew that the universe had your back? How would it feel if you knew that everything was unfolding in divine fashion? And how would you feel if you knew that you couldn't mess it up? Wouldn't that feel amazing? And so why do we choose not to surrender and trust? Um, the, t the, the definition of surrender is to cease to resist or to let go, which is kind of like giving up. Um, Michael Singer, he wrote a book called The Surrender Experiment. And he says, no matter what, life is going to put us through the changes we need to go through. The question is, are we willing to use this force for our transformation? So as we think about it, surrendering is the ultimate expression of trust in the divine. There's a, there's a saying in Alcoholics Anonymous, it says, let go and let God. So as we go through this journey in life, what do we choose to surrender and who do we choose to surrender to? In, in the spiritual realm, when we think of surrendering, we think of surrendering to a higher power and to our higher self. And as I think about this journey of life, I'm thinking, okay, if I'm, if I'm backpacking through Europe, and I've got this backpack. I've got stuff that I need, and I probably have stuff that I don't need. And so the first thing I think about as a minimalist is what do I get to let go of? And one of my big things that I really focus on is being present. And if I'm being present, then there's no worry because I'm not thinking about the future. And there's no regret because I'm not thinking about the past. 
I trust that everything that I have gone through has been a divine unfolding. And I also trust that what I get to go through has a divine unfolding. So then I get to be present. And that is our only place of power. So when we surrender all our worries and all our regrets, we can be more powerful. Now the other thing I thought, okay, what else do I get to let go of? What else do I get to surrender? We live in a world of lots and lots of illusion. A bunch of stuff that's just made up. Now some of this stuff really serves, right? There's this concept of time. Somebody made it up and it's based on the rotation of the planets, but it serves us as a community, as a world, because it's like, you want to be this at this place at this time, well, that serves. But what are the illusions that are not serving us? A couple of them that come to mind, we have this illusion of control. We think we're in charge. We think that we have this control. Elizabeth Gilbert said, um, you're afraid to surrender because you don't want to lose control, but you never had control. You only had anxiety. Can we let go of that? That kind of feels heavy, right? Another illusion that we have is this illusion of fear. We let fear hold us back and limit, limit us so much. And there's a beautiful quote from the wise sage guru, Will Smith. And he says, fear is not real. The only place that fear can exist is in our thoughts of the future. It is a product of our imagination, causing, causing us to fear things that do not at present and may never exist. Do not misunderstand me. Danger is very real, but fear is a choice. Danger is real, but fear is a choice. How many times do we allow fear to slow us down? That's kind of heavy. That keeps us from surrendering. Another one of these illusions, um, and this is an interesting one because for me, as we journey through this life, there's always the hero's journey, right? And you have the protagonist, you have the antagonist. And for me, our higher self is the protagonist. And the ego is the antagonist, right? It's our lower self. It's the one that keeps us, for example, the longing to belong. Our ego gets in the way of us feeling like we belong because it makes us feel separate. Um, Alan Watts, he said, the biggest ego trip is getting rid of your ego. And of course, this, the joke of it all is that the ego does not exist. Think about it. Our ego is an identity that was created. A lot of it was just inherited. And yet we strive to protect it and defend it. And when we can let that ego be a servant instead of a master, when we can let our higher self take charge, right? And then when that ego pops its head up, we just go, oh, a cute little human. And let it go. The ego is something that can be a good tool, but most of the time it becomes disempowering. So if we think about all the other things that might not serve us, um, there's a concept from Byron Katie, and it's called my business, other people's business, and God's business. And so many times, we see ourselves in other people's business or God's business, and there's nothing we can do about it. It's, it, it's, it, it's part of this sense of control. And when we can learn to stay in our own business, that's, where, that's our domain. That's where we can surrender. I remember I had this client, and her mother had, had died of cancer and had, had abandoned her, and her dad got remarried too quick, and she went through a like a list of 10 things. 
and I explain this concept of whose business is it. And it's like, okay. Oh, and one of the things was she had all this stress. And so her mom passing away was God's business. Her dad getting married too soon was her dad's business, and she was all worried about it, and all these other things. I said, if you got out of everybody else's business, your anxiety would go way down. But we find ourselves being in other people's business when maybe it's not serving us. Now, another thing that I looked at is one of the things that I love is there's a concept, a Taoist concept called Wu Wei, which is basically go with the flow. And in order, in order to go with the flow, we get to show a ton of trust in the divine. Now, you've got attachment on one side and you've got resistance on the other side. And imagine a river, right? And you're just flowing down the river. And if you grab on the side and you attach, it's going to slow you down. And if you resist and try to swim upstream, it's going to slow you down. And so we're using energy where if we choose to trust and flow, we can actually become more powerful and use our power in more effective ways than trying to attach to something or trying to resist something. Now, the beautiful thing, life is impermanent. Life is a simple journey from birth to death. Anybody know of any detours? I don't know of any detours. We all came into this world and we all get to leave. You know, we get to go on to the next great adventure. But during that time, how much do we want to lean in and just flow with it versus resist? Um, part of what I've learned is to get into a flow state, there's this intersection between discipline and surrender. So where these two circles intersect is a place of flow. And if we think about the disciplines that we have in our life, one of the things that I do is I meditate. So I've created a discipline of meditating, and then I surrender to that experience. Now, sometimes it's amazing. Sometimes it's so amazing. And then sometimes I've got the monkey mind going yada, 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 yada. I don't get to choose that as much. But if I'm disciplined and I surrender to the experience, I can become in a flow state. So as we learn to do that, um, it's super powerful. Now, if we think about maybe some of the tools that we can use um, to surrender, the, the number one thing for me is being able to meditate and practice mindfulness. So meditation, you know, you, you sit there by yourself and you practice that. Mindfulness is learning to be present in your day-to-day -day -day activities. And for me, instead of being like this active participant a lot of times, especially when I have disempowering thoughts and emotions and things going on, I choose to become an observer. I just choose to observe. And when we stand in that power, right, it's our higher self that's the observer. And a lot of times our ego will come in or disempowering programming will come in. And for me, it's like I treat my brain like a five-year-old because most of the time it is. <laughs> you know, it's like cute little human. That's a cute thought. It's not going to serve, you know. I mean, think about a five-year-old that wants a whole jar of cookies. And that's how we act sometimes. Our brains, they're cool. They're great tools, but you don't trust them a lot. I don't trust mine a lot. So when we think about meditation, for me, prayer is when I get to talk to the divine. And meditation is when the divine talks to me. So do we take time to listen? Do we take time to be still? So in addition to, to meditation, something that helps us to surrender is choose to be a vessel. What if everybody on this planet said, I'm just going to do my part to help out the divine? Right? So one of my daily rituals, you know, I've got like meditation and prayer and journaling and gratitude 
and one of them is an act of service. And so I always ask, where can I serve? Who can I serve? And it's just like anything else, it's practice. And the more we practice, the better we get at it. And so as we learn to practice, um, we can tune in. Uh, another thing that shows up as far as what can we do if we're attaching or resisting reality, then we're not accepting what is. And I believe in our lives we do that so much, right? Something happens like, oh, that shouldn't happen. Okay, cool, it did. Eckhart Tolle says, when something happens, act like you chose it. So think about this. This actually happened to me. So if you get, a car, you get in a car accident, and you're like, oh, no, this shouldn't have happened, blah, 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 blah. Okay, it already happened, and you're putting energy towards something that's already in the past. When you choose to move forward and you say, okay, I chose this, then you're looking, now what? So that's something that you can use power for. I had two car accidents within eight days, both caused by deer. I was reading Eckhart Tolle. On the first one, I was like, oh, no, no. On the second one, I was like, I chose this. I can tell you the energy is completely different. It was such a beautiful lesson. Um, another approach uh, comes from Neil Donald Walsh, the real conversations with God. And he says, whenever I have a challenge in my life, I simply say to myself, thank you, God, for helping me understand that this problem has already been solved. How does that feel? Does that feel good? Um, the next thing that I wanted to focus on is using our heart and our gut and our first impression to be connected to the divine, to surrender to the divine. Uh, in, in the Western world, we are up in our heads so much, probably 95%, and we're down here very little. And as I've studied a lot of the Eastern traditions and, and done a lot of work, what I've learned is these are way smarter. These are way smarter. Our gut and our heart actually have neurons and you, you've heard that. I mean, you, people have heard, follow your gut, follow your heart, follow your first impression. And I believe that intuition and inspiration come from here. And then what happens biologically, there, there is a vagus nerve in, that, that goes up to our brain. And there's actually more information that goes from our heart and our gut into our brain. And if something goes up into your brain, that's your first impression. And then as soon as you have your first impression, your, your brain starts going, oh no, second doubts, fear, whatever. But as we practice to come from our heart and our gut and tap into that, it's amazing what happens as we grow and learn and practice that. The... Um, the Lakota Indian tribe has a word called Shante Ishta, which is eye of the heart. And what's beautiful about that is they would pray, they would actually pray from their heart. And sometimes there would be words and sometimes there wouldn't. But it's, for me, it's such a, there's so many ancient traditions that actually talk about coming from these spaces instead of our head. Um, now, the cool thing about surrendering is it's just a lot of emptying the cup and unlearning and unbecoming what we naturally inherently are. We're divine love. And I had this, I had this meditation where I had this visual of this hot air balloon. And I may have shared this before, but, but there was this hot air balloon and the nature of the hot air balloon was to rise. And spiritually, I used to think, you know, I've got to strive to raise my vibration to do this. And that seems like a lot of effort. But what I've learned is 
this hot air balloon, its nature is to rise, and all you have to do is cut the ballasts off. And those ballasts are the illusions that we have, our fear, our want to control, our ego. And the more that we can let that, those go, the more we naturally rise to the vibration of the divine. So one of the things I'd like to do, I'd like to um, close with a meditation. And what I'd like us to do is to actually practice this. Okay, so um, we'll get comfortable and I'll just ask a few questions. And as we sit there with our eyes closed, um, I want you to just be open to the first thing that comes into your mind when I ask these questions. And don't doubt them, just trust them and see what shows up. If something shows up, great. And if not, great. But it's practice. So let's get comfortable. Take a few breaths, close your eyes, take some deep breaths. Just get present, relax. And the first question I want you to think about is if I am suffering, what am I attaching to or resisting in my life? Just think about it. The next question is, what beliefs about myself am I holding on to that do not serve me? of control. And as we close this meeting, we recognize the oneness and divinity that we all are. We recognize that the universe does have our back, and that each of our lives are unfolding perfectly in divine order. We recognize the divinity in each of ourselves and in others, knowing that everything that does happen happens for our higher and best good. And the more that we surrender to the divine and to our divine selves, the more we recognize that oneness, that belonging, And so as we leave today, as we've had a chance to look at ourselves and ask these questions, may we each determine what steps we get to take to surrender, to put our divine self in charge. We've spoken this and it's released as together we say, and so it is. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am 
so blessed. Randy, that was awesome. Thank you so very much. We just <sighs> surrender. Um, that really spoke to me. <laughs> uh, anything I surrender has claw marks on it <laughs> from where I, how tightly I've been holding. All right, this is that wonderful time in our service where we participate in the divine flow, recognizing the blessings that have come to us and that we are part of the law of circulation in which the more we give out, the more comes to us. And in gratitude for what comes to us, we keep the circulation going by giving out. And part of that gratitude is for our spiritual center. So as our ushers are coming forward this morning, you can also text to give on your phone. That information will be back up on the screen once I start, stop talking. Um, but we will do together our offering affirmation. So let's say that together. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, filled with gratitude, I let this be, and so it is. Let's hear some more from Leslie Monroe. This song was written when I lived for four years up in Bear Lake Valley, if anybody knows where that is, 26 miles north of the lake, at the base of a mountain called Sherman's Peak. Sherman's Peak was named after a, an Indian chief, from what they tell me. And this uh, was an experience which I would call numinous. And the reason I bring that up is because I'm in a class with Reverend Myrna. 
And we are studying what the numinous is. And the numinous is having the direct experiences with the divine. And this song actually came before the experience over Sherman's Peak. As the sun began to set over Sherman's Peak tonight, in the overcast of dark clouds, broken openings, so oh brilliant, oh, what a light. What a view from where I was standing, oh, what a light. The splendor so Sorry about that, everybody and Raj. I was just about to help Leslie with that beautiful song. Thank you, Rory, for stepping up. That was amazing. I had to excuse myself and put a new battery in my guitar. <laughs> I love hearing electric guitar, praise God. It's my favorite. <sighs> so what a, what a beautiful day. Um, I'm trusting that um, me running out of batteries is not a message <laughs> for the week. You're shifting. Uh, I don't think Just so. Just making shifts, right? 
Uh, we have a beautiful week coming up. Um, um, it's been a blessed day. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Leslie. Um, Teze is, is this coming Wednesday night. Please come and join us. If it, if it works in your schedule, it will be so worth it. And remember our party this coming Friday night. Uh, we always have a, a blast. Uh, this, this group is all about parties, I swear. <laughs> Let's stand together and, and kind of put an exclamation point on Randy's message to us. Um, this is called, I Release and I Let Go. There was a time in my life Thought I had to do it all for myself I didn't know the grace of God was sufficient Didn't know the love of God Yes, I'm old.